Season 2 of The White Lotus focuses on the guests and staff of the titular resort in Taormina, Sicily. Despite the White Lotus Resort being a dream vacation, the season opens seven days in the future, revealing that for some unfortunate guests, the Italian getaway would end in death. But let's start at the beginning as the newest guests arrive in Sicily. Tanya McQuad arrives at the White Lotus on vacation with her new husband, Greg. Greg is frustrated that Tanya has brought her young assistant, Portia, along with her, and the tension in their relationship doesn't end there. Greg is temperamental for the duration of his stay at the White Lotus and constantly takes secret calls that he insists to Tanya are for work. As Greg repeatedly reminds Tanya, he is nowhere near as wealthy as her, and due to their prenup, he still needed to work. And that work eventually calls him back to America, leaving Tanya and Portia alone in Sicily. Also checking into the White Lotus is Hollywood producer Dominic DeGrasso, his sleazy widowed father Bert, and his nice guy Stanford grad son Albi. The DeGrasso trio are in Italy to reconnect with their familial roots and explore their homeland. Originally, Dominic's wife and daughter were supposed to accompany the family on their trip, but they decided to stay home in America after discovering Dominic's repeated infidelities. Upon first arriving in Sicily, Dominic hires local sex worker Lucia and her friend Mia to stay with him in secret. Eventually, Dominic feels guilty over his actions and breaks off his arrangement with the women in the hopes of bettering himself and winning his wife back. Although their sexual arrangement with Dominic comes to an end, he still does allow Lucia and Mia to use his guest access to the hotel, greatly frustrating the short-tempered hotel manager Valentina. Lucia teaches her friend Mia about the perks of sex work, then prowls the hotel guest for new potential clients. Meanwhile, Mia has big dreams of being a professional singer, and sets her sights on charming the hotel's lounge pianist Giuseppe in the hopes that he can secure her a regular singing gig at the White Lotus. Mia offers to have sex with Giuseppe to earn his favor, but when he takes some of Lucia's pills that he assumes are Viagra, he instead collapses and is hospitalized. With Giuseppe gone, Mia is able to convince Valentina to allow her to fill in during his absence. Meanwhile, Valentina becomes romantically obsessed with a receptionist, Isabella. When Isabella informs Valentina that she is engaged to fellow receptionist Rocco, Valentina is devastated. Mia takes this opportunity to seduce Valentina as further thanks for the singing gig. When Giuseppe returns from the hospital, Valentina fires him and gives Mia the full-time position. Other new guests at the White Lotus include Ethan and Harper Spiller, on vacation with Ethan's college roommate Cameron Sullivan and his wife Daphne. Ethan is newly wealthy after selling his tech company, and Harper is suspicious that the brash Cameron has only re-entered Ethan's life to take advantage of his newfound wealth. Harper is put off by Cameron and Daphne seemingly out of touch and privileged lives, and their constant public display displays of affection. This is in stark contrast to her relationship with Ethan, who seems to have lost interest in Harper romantically. Harper's reservations about Cameron are seemingly confirmed when Daphne takes her on an overnight girls trip. Cameron pitches Ethan to invest in his company, then buys Lucia and Mia's services for a night of drugs and sex. Although Ethan refuses to have sex with Mia, he does keep the events of his night with Cameron a secret from Harper upon her return. When Harper finds Cameron's condom wrapper in their room, she assumes Ethan is lying to her and has cheated on her. Having actually grown close to Daphne, Harper vents her frustrations to her new friend. Daphne confesses to knowing about Cameron's infidelities, but admits to having affairs of her own to cope, and even implies that one of their kids was secretly fathered by her trainer. Ethan then becomes paranoid that Harper secretly cheated on him with Cameron. Harper confesses to drunkenly kissing Cameron, but Ethan believes they went even further. Ethan then confronts Cameron before telling Daphne of his suspicions. Daphne seems oddly fine with this revelation before inviting Ethan to explore a nearby island. Upon Ethan's return from his mystery trip with Daphne, he heads to his hotel room where he finally initiates sex with Harper. Meanwhile, Albie begins a brief relationship with Portia, but things fizzle out when she meets the much more exciting and charismatic Jack. Albie then meets and pursues a relationship with Lucia, unaware that his father had slept with her just a few days earlier. Dominic tries to dissuade Albie from seeing Lucia, but has no way of doing so that wouldn't reveal his own indiscretions. As Albi and Lucia grow closer, Lucia confides in Albi that she owes a lot of money to a man named Alessio. 
Albi, thinking Lucia's feelings for him are genuine and that they could continue to pursue a relationship in Los Angeles, makes a proposition to his father. If Dominic agrees to pay Lucia 50,000 euros, then Albi would tell his mother how remorseful and changed Dominic was in an effort to win her back. Dominic reluctantly pays Lucia the money, but Albi is disappointed to discover that she had scammed him. Meanwhile, the lonely Tanya is befriended by a wealthy British man named Quentin, who had inherited a home from his father in Palermo. Quentin and his eccentric friends immediately take Tanya under their wing to show her a good time in the hopes of lifting her spirits. Portia tags along with her boss and new friends, and Jack is revealed to be Quentin's nephew. As Tanya confides in Quentin about her struggles with Greg, he confides in Tanya about his own experiences with heartbreak. He had only been in love once in his life, decades prior to a cowboy he met in America, who couldn't love him back because he was straight. Tanya soon begins to grow suspicious of her new friends. First, she secretly catches the supposed relatives Quentin and Jack having sex. Then, during a massive party thrown by Quentin, she discovers from photographs that Greg was the cowboy from Quentin's story. Despite Tanya's reservations, she ends up being seduced by Quentin's young and attractive cocaine dealer. While this is happening, Jack takes Portia for a night out. Despite Portia's insistence on returning to her boss, Jack continues to get drunk and insists on the two checking into a hotel instead. Portia then discovers from the drunken Jack that he had taken her out as a distraction, and that Quentin wasn't his uncle, but instead a wealthy man who had saved him from a very bad situation in exchange for sex. Portia calls Tanya to warn her about their precarious situation, but it's too late. Jack takes Portia's phone and keeps her away from Tanya, while Tanya is trapped on a yacht with Quentin and all of his friends. Quentin needed money to help pay for the upkeep of his estate, and was working with Greg to kill Tanya and steal her inheritance. Tanya manages to find a gun in the cocaine dealer's bag, opening fire on her would-be captors. After murdering Quentin and his associates, Tanya attempts to jump in the dinghy, which could drive her to safety. Unfortunately, she hits her head and drowns. Jack, feeling slight remorse over his involvement in the murder plot, takes Portia to the airport and warns her of the danger she was in. As the season comes to a close, Cameron and Daphne remain together in their open relationship, Harper and Ethan have reconciled, Dominic is given new hope in his marriage despite still having a wandering eye, Albie and Portia reconnect after their terrible experiences in Sicily, and Lucia and Mia walk off into the sunset, having successfully acquired the money and job they were after.